Hi, uh, I'm Nivedita Indrajit and I'm in conversation with Sweta Samota. And I think I met her because I wanted to start writing again. And uh, she's a friend of a friend and that's how I know her. And I've done her seven day uh, workshop on writing to ignite my writing skills again. So welcome Shweta and thank you. You're the best selling author, coach and the best mentor I think I've ever had among all the mentors. Wow. There's a lot of allowance and the, at the same time, there's a lot of nudge when you nudge. And uh, it's just so nice to just be in your space. Like existing in that one year mentor program also is like a good space to just be, you know. So thank you for that. And thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Nivedita. You know, it's like a big thing, kind of, you know, best thing I would have ever heard in the last few months. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, you telling me that, you know, you enjoy being part of it. And, you know, you inviting me here. It's it's a great thing. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I, I know that you give an introduction to us when we joined the course, like, you know, you did your IT and computers and stuff, and then you went into writing. So can you briefly tell your story, your okay. journey? <laughs> How I became an author? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> More authors, you know, one, what, 100,000 authors? That's your target, right? Yes, yes, yes. To impact, you know, to touch uh, at least lives of one lakh authors, 100,000 authors. Yeah. So first you became an author and now you're going to touch and change the lives of 100,000 authors. And that's a lot of books to read in the future. All <laughs> <laughs> of the best selling. Yeah, see, uh, I love reading books. And, you know, I as far as I remember in school, people used to call me a bookworm and they used to kind of hate hate me, you know, for being so, so passionate about books. Okay. And even in college days, uh, the prof even the professors uh, had started, you know, telling me that she's the Google or uh, whenever you see you, she's either on books or she is on Google, you know, reading stuff. So reading is like, maybe it's my second self. And uh, that's how actually I, you know, organically became a writer and an author. Uh, you already know, uh, you know, I'm a soft, I was a software engineer, I did my engineering. And I'm someone who, who, you know, is kind of a techie and a geeky also at heart. Uh, I scored 100% in physics, chemistry and mathematics yeah. in 12. Yeah. And uh, I'm proud. of. I, I, I did actually put a lot of effort for 100%. And I remember my, uh, you know, teachers uh, telling me even now, you know, what they told me that time that Shweta, anyone can get 99 marks. Okay. Uh, and, you know, they, today also anyone can get 99 and even, you know, 100% also people are getting today. But in those days, this is like uh, 97 time, 97, 99 period, 1999. And uh, uh, they used to tell me Shweta for that one mark or one person, you have to work, you know, 10 times more than the others, okay? And you have to be uh, so committed. And I remember that, 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 you know, everyone is doing it, you know, what extra you are doing. And I did put a lot of effort and it actually paid off to see 100% in all the three subjects. It's, it's like uh, one dream fulfilled. So yeah. that's one thing. And uh, also what today when I go back and see that, you know, why I was studying so much what exactly what reward I was looking for myself now I realize I, I now I know why because I come from a very traditional family where uh, the girls were not given that much of importance in the household and I saw that when I was scoring high I was actually getting recognition in that joint family that you know she is the studious one she getting you know always uh, these marks and no one speaks uh, engineering that day and you know in those yeah. years the first one who actually went out of the city you know stayed in a hostel so today i see that because i wanted to come out of it uh, i saw my uh, relatives my uh, mother and uh, all others just working in the in the kitchen and had no say in business okay and no. say anywhere else and today i see that you know i didn't want to be in their place i couldn't see myself and I think today I realize why I always studied so much because one is I wanted, you know, a name in the family that yes, I exist. 
and also that uh, uh, my parents didn't have any reason to you know say no no you know you're not good so why you want to become an engineer yeah so now i see and everything fits now that mm-hmm. yes i had a reason that time i why i wanted to excel uh, i was actually conforming to the society you know, even today in india it's all about marks although i don't insist it on my daughter but uh, it's all about marks okay and mm-hmm. i feel sorry i feel sorry even i was a part of it and uh, i i feel now what other students felt about me because kind of because their parents also must be telling them you know be like her and study like her but uh, marks are not everything i have i have learned that way, that thing also that you should follow your uh, passion okay? what exactly you love doing so i realized that only when i actually failed in my startup okay till then i was actually doing what the society expects you to do okay be good in uh, your studies okay yeah. then the high profile jobs and then also go ahead and start your own company build a million dollar startup you know all those things uh, i actually followed that uh, it's good to follow if you love that but uh, if you're not enjoying it it's not satisfying you should actually take a step back and think what exactly you want to do okay these days it's actually uh, possible to build million dollar dollar anything okay yeah. so you follow your passion and you can actually build a million dollar passion business okay whatever passion you have so uh, that knowledge and uh, that uh, direction was missing in our days when our parents didn't have that vision okay and that knowledge and now today since we have that uh, i i got that because i failed in starting okay if i hadn't failed i would have never actually uh, you know got that change in my thinking maybe it was like a switch suddenly i was like you know kind of woken up from a sleep that you know uh, what are you doing and that failure actually helped me understand myself and uh, that's how everything got into place i mean i figured out throughout my life otherwise i would have not thought so much about my life and what i really want to do um, that time you know when my startup failed this is like 2012 to 2014 uh, uh, 15 time frame where i i tried a lot you know different ideas and uh, it was not that they were not working it was like kind of breaking even but it was not actually you know going up okay exponential growth was not there and uh, i realized that you know no sense in working on those things that is not not actually uh, you know working the way i want to do so uh, we decided that we're going to shut it off and that's when it was like kind of the first failure of my life and if you get the first failure when you're like 10 year old 8 year old it's much easier but you're getting this first failure in your 30s it's like you know you are you have not learned to embrace failures to come out of it and i was like you know what have i done and what's what's wrong it was like kind of end of world for me what that 8 year old or 10 year old or a 16 year old will feel that i failed in you know flung in 10th or 12th and i'm not going to get admission now you know i felt that in 30s that uh, it's end of world for me mm-hmm. and my parents my husband you know my family they were all there to support and they were like big deal you know you can go ahead and go back to job or you know start another startup what's what's the big deal you failed you know lost few lakhs it's okay you learned a lot but i it was hard for me to digest that i have failed and uh, yes you know took some time over 6 months of crying <laughs> in the bed <laughs> uh being sulking or you know uh, bad tempered all the day or crying for no reason it was like no purpose in life lost okay i had that you know that you can go back to job but i had tasted it i had took a decision that no i don't want to go there and now it didn't feel so flashy and so attractive to me now you know building something on my own uh, felt attractive also because in last 3 years of uh, startup i realized that uh, i was actually enjoying that kind of thrill uh, you get in risk taking risk and all yeah. uh, 
it was like on your edge every single day and probably that is why also uh, it took a toll on my health physically emotionally you know how much you are going so it was see startup is like uh, a test of you as a person also so it tested me for 3 years and i gave up so now i wanted to taste it again and um, i i told them that i'm not going back to job ever okay although my family my my husband was like you know you can still go back for few months he did try but uh, although i was doubtful you know should i really go back but uh, it you know at the end i i was like you know i don't want to end up there again <laughs> yeah so uh, that's when um, i got back to my reading habits okay so i said you know enough of crying or kitna okay uh, it it had dried up I also consulted a psychologist you know to come out of these anxiety attack so uh, i also was uh, suffering from the moment i came out of my comfort zone left my comfort zone i used to feel a uh, kind of uh, nauseatic or some sensation in my palms or head so when i consulted a psychologist he said that uh, this is agoraphobia the moment you come out of your comfort zone you feel you're not safe okay mm-hmm. and maybe nobody is going to come to your help see it all came down you know came from my childhood days okay yeah. and actually burst only when i failed okay so it was not just because of the startup okay it was built up over time and mm-hmm. uh, i realized i was actually uh, you know started suffering from this because i used to travel alone in buses okay oh. and uh, to my uh, hostel you know i mean to another city come back uh, by overnight buses so you know it would have actually uh, got developed that time when we don't feel safe as females okay because yeah. india is not safe you know especially and we have heard so much of news every day something or the other thing happens so it has actually like built up over time it was not right. just one failure but that one failure helped to actually come out now, now it's in your face like yes now i know what it is and uh, that's when you know uh, i took help of a psychologist that i want to get cured and when i took this help my mother was also suffering from it oh so, you know wow uh, she's been suffering for many years but when i started talking about it she also consulted a doctor she also got herself cured uh, see it's like diabetes uh, so it is it is there okay but now since we know we have it we can actually take care of it and yeah. the symptoms so okay. only because i started talking about it i told her that i'm suffering from it she also shared that you know even she was uh, suffering from it so uh, it should be that you know if you are suffering from something you should actually speak out to your parents to your family members so that you don't know you don't know what they are going through and she was suffering from quite many years uh, it was me i was suffering for just a year or so but she was actually suffering from many years but she didn't tell anyone and uh, the moment i i said that you know i'm going to a doctor i'm seeing the difference a similar time she also started uh, you know consulting another doctor in her uh, city and she also uh, you know took some medicines and also got back to a healthy routine and uh, that's that's about my you know health wise journey and the same time when i was going through this i got back to my hobby of reading reading a lot so as i told you know yeah. very uh, very passionate about reading so i was reading one book a day mm. and wow. uh, you know all ha- all i had uh, for the entire day was myself <laughs> so you know bob you see uh, before this phase i was so happy being myself with myself alone you know we love to be then uh, we go we uh, i got into such phase where i was not happy alone i mean didn't feel safe alone i used to feel suddenly something is going to happen and no one no one is going to come to my help that's that's actually you know anxiety mm-hmm. and uh, i then came over it again i started enjoying my uh, you know not loneliness but being alone i yeah. started enjoying my solitude and that was like again a growth for me because i come for a year where i used to always cling to someone that i want to be with you because i don't want to be alone 
Mm-hmm. I did have a lot of issues there also where people used to be used to feel, you know, because they never knew what I was going through. So uh, people used to feel that, you know, how come she's always with me all the time? Yeah. Um, they didn't know that what I was going through. So um, yeah. I went over it and uh, similar time that too many things happening, right? Yeah. <laughs> on twitter actually narendra modi ji started following me on twitter so it was like a big boost i was already uh, have come out of it meaning getting cured i also started running so i joined pinkathon yeah. and same time i was reading a lot of books and engaging on twitter okay? hmm. so uh, he started following me on twitter and uh, that was like you know kind of a catalyst in my author journey Mm-hmm. that's when i decided i want to write something so yeah, uh, that's how nine happened right that's how nine happened and um, then since then you know it was like a different journey all together and it all happened organically you know nothing uh, pre thought that no i want to become this and become that i wanted to become an ias officer in 12th standard again because i had so you know heard so much uh, fancy about being a collector or someone but now i feel that uh, you know the power is in our hands okay you don't have to be in a position to help someone okay? you can help anyway yeah. so that time i didn't have that that knowledge and today i know that i don't have to be you know in that place to help someone although uh, decision making does help but still whatever in our is in our hands uh, we can we can do that so yeah, that's like- like when you are saying right like i failed in my company or like uh, this happened with my mental and uh, physical health and and there is this challenges right from your point of view you are talking about it from a like a failure or a first change and a u turn and something like that or a you know that turn where life changes what i am seeing from my point of view is that with with that change or the medical help and stuff you are the change maker that you talk about today Yeah. from a women enterprise you're writing a book about it also right yes and yes. Uh, there's also the doorway to uh, uh, 100000 authors i see that mm-hmm. i wouldn't look at your lacks as uh, a loss i would look at it as an investment to all these people that you are mentoring today Don't and the numbers are raising i see it because every month people are joining in that group yeah. right yeah. true 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 so So I wouldn't look at it as a failure exactly. <laughs> you can say you know I was in my cocoon okay and getting transformed so it was like a lot of pressure and heat on me and obviously I wouldn't feel comfortable in it. So, yeah. So even today now when I go through some tough phases it's uh, the thing that I always tell you know something cool and great is coming okay yeah. because because this is not happening the way i want probably because something else has to happen which is much bigger than this so today i know okay, and i don't feel uh, discouraged or bad or even if i feel uh, i come out of it very quickly because i know you know bigger picture so so can you say more about uh, the program that's coming up in january the okay in- so so yes uh, i uh, now when i started uh, writing okay, i started attending a lot of workshops here in mumbai the author advantage intensive live right yes, yes best selling authors advantage intensive so uh, now the vision behind this program is that i don't want authors to go through what i have you know gone through because uh, it's not so easy to actually extract information from best selling authors how are you doing it okay one thing is why are they going to tell you because you are stranger they have also gone through so much uh, and they might give you some strategy but then they that might be okay build an author platform but how do you actually do it or go ahead and you know use this technique but uh why okay you know why waste time when i have done it for you i've studied like 300 plus best selling books reader at heart writer now so i know those techniques so i want authors to actually accelerate uh, on their journey yeah. uh, learn both writing and marketing now why didn't i take publishing because you know you could have already invested somewhere or you might want to self publish or you want to traditionally publish so i thought that you know let publishing be uh, an optional thing but writing and marketing 
whatever you do, I mean, to whichever publisher, publisher you go, marketing, you have to do. So uh, these two things I'm covering in this two-day intensive program. Uh, first day is all about nailing your book. Uh, now most uh, authors actually suffer in sales is because they've not thought about it. What, you know, the plan I'm giving, they've not thought about while writing it. Uh, yeah. They just think that, you know, I'm write, going to write a book and they write it without thinking who's the audience. Yeah. Plus it take like years to finish it where you can actually do it in a month's time or even 10 days time. It's all about priorities and the right technique and the right direction. So uh, when you come to this two-day event, you get the right direction to do it. Okay, And plus the proven techniques. Uh, I've worked over uh, with 500 plus authors. Okay, mm -hmm. So I know what uh, things they did wrong and how I, they corre I corrected them. So I have that distilled knowledge uh, here for you, which you can apply in your author journey. So that is why uh, I'm doing this two-day event. My vision is that every year I'm going to do this event once where I'm going to present this distilled information about the authors, about books, what is working in the market in, you know, in this event. And then the next year also you would want to attend, even if you have attended the first year, because you want to know the new information that has come in. So that's my vision that uh, every year I'm going to do this uh, two-day event. Was this the thing that you mentioned, like when we were doing the seven-day intensive, right? This You mentioned that you did this as a one-day, two-day program before. Is it the same? No, no, no. This is not the I was doing the programs for how do you actually write a book offline in 2017-18 time. So uh, this is totally, you know, not totally, but a lot different because I'm going to present things which have not presented uh, before, case studies, how I have done it. So plus uh, my observation, my uh, observation from uh, a writer and an author perspective that how some authors have done it. Okay, so I'm going to give you that uh, distal information uh, in this particular uh, two-day event. And uh, I know for sure, like uh, you know, the uh, the amount of material that you present. Like recently, if I can talk about it, like we had we we do have weekly calls on Wednesdays, right? Yeah. And uh, you talk about subjects, and it it it, it amazes me. It awes me. It's like. My God, this woman, she thinks about all this. Like, this is what goes on in her brain. Like, we were talking about book, book covers and, you know, you're talking about teal and stuff like that, right? So I'm like, wow, like, I mean, how... I, and I'm relating this exactly to that 1% mark that you're talking about. Yeah. From 99 to 100%, what you scored. Yes. This yes. Is, that is contributing here, like, to going into such detail. Yeah, yeah. So I also believe that uh, even if, you know, people think that it's all about marks, it's more about your attitude uh, towards doing anything. Okay? Yeah. People are giving 99%. Are you giving 100%? Because that's what you are. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, it's built over, you know, right from childhood, what kind of person you are and how much you give. And probably that's one thing that parents should actually stress upon is whatever you're doing, do it with 100% heart. So that's yeah. what I think. Although you talked about the marks, but I feel like you collected the knowledge as well. It's not just the marks. Yes, 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 of course, of course. So and, and today I tell my daughter, I can solve her uh, sums like anything. And she's like, you know, you've not seen these books for so long. And I'm like, you know, it's there here. Uh, yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's not just about uh, marks. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have anything to say to people who, uh, I don't know, like any message, anything that you'd like to say? Okay, so, you know, uh, I'm a Robin Sharma fan. And I always say, you know, these are my uh, four life mantras. One is, first thing is, you have to be fit like an athlete. Get fit like an athlete. Uh, because even if you don't want to do anything, okay, to serve your own family, to, serve, to, to be happy in your own space, you have to be fit. Okay? You have to be fit healthy yeah. physically first because physical mental they're all related people who say that you know no you know they're not related i've i've gone through it i know that physical is related to mental emotional so all these spaces are related start with your physical fitness that's one thing okay that's my first life mantra that to be fit like an athlete second is if you want to you know get influenced you want to learn a lot first you know first thing you you can start with is reading books so read a lot dedicate at least 15 minutes every single day 
the third thing is if you want to become a leader okay you want to influence people write a lot okay that's why I write books so uh, first thing get fit like an athlete because if you're fit you can fail more okay and you will live longer so you have a lot more attempts to do so number one number two is read more number three is write more and number four is learn more because there's so much to learn and upgrade yourself so keep upgrading yourself keep learning because there's there's no end to it so these are the four things i want to tell you know everyone who's watching this uh, video so before i met you i was doing two things reading a lot and learning a lot okay and after i met you um i started writing i started uh, my 10k steps wow. every day yes. and now wow. i'm like i used to walk 10 kilometers every day before uh, vidur was born wow and later on every time i would try to go back to it it would go in breaks and pieces but with the writing i mean this is a one plus one bonus that you are giving me <laughs> i should actually be paying you for it that also <laughs> that i'm writing because of you at the same time i'm i'm preparing for the marathon because of you wow amazing so the four things that you said right now two were already there and two are work in progress and i think uh, i'm doing 10, 10 kilometers every day successfully for the last that's one week at least that's great that's great i saw your post that's amazing that's amazing yeah so thank you okay and what else you are doing i mean how's your book going book is good it's i think uh, the outline is done and uh, but i'm not this person to go back and do bits and pieces so it's taking a bit of a challenge to do it the way you are telling i would just uh, write the book and i would not look at it before Mm. But for me to actually go back and break it into pieces the way you said the story arc and you know include the stuff for me that's a challenge that's a challenge i'm actually trying to overcome i'm not participating in the challenges and stuff i'm focusing on okay i used to do it like this but now i, I there's a format in which it's been done so i'm acclimatizing myself to that format of it okay okay so and uh, it's in the editing phase amazing amazing so your first draft is already done right yeah yeah that's cool so yeah and i'm not much of an editor i would rather not edit but then that's <laughs> at least self editing to you have to do then you can actually hire an editor yeah so yeah i'm doing i'm i'm it's like uh, it's a wall that i have to knock down a little knock down a little every day mm. uh i still haven't done it the number of hours that uh, i would love to but there is some progress i would say so see something is better than nothing okay. yeah and now my son is telling um because i can't write so fast i will tell you the story you write because now the the script that i am writing he <laughs> wants to contribute to that story okay okay and he's like you have to include this as well you have to include that as well i'm like okay so this is a book written by two people now <laughs> <laughs> that's cool you can actually encourage him to start writing his own you know set of stories yeah so uh, at school where he goes to is not allowed a uh, gadget yet okay he wants to go and type on the laptop because he sees me ah. and he's like I, i said no you have to use the long hand so he's like no 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 i'd like to type so but the school is like no you start writing first and then you can start typing later okay okay that's so that's so nice yeah so that's going on so there are two series that's going on one is that kittu and kutumaran series yes i am waiting actually for it one is vegetable stories okay so we have vegetable stories going on okay it's like recipes so he, he, if he wants to eat a particular food then uh, we talk about a recipe as a story Okay that's nice that's different actually yeah so that's going on and then there's the novel going on simultaneously okay you should actually now focus on one get it out then sec- focus on second get it out and stuff you know yeah so thank you thank you thank you for entering my life <laughs> and opening the doors thank you so much thank you for you know you know the opportunity to do it thank yeah. you yeah so for me when i and i'm not exaggerating this but when i when i say this when i when you entered my life it's like that vaikuntha you know opening the doors like not one door it's like door after door after door before this they talk about that uh, wow you know like they'll show in movies actually you know uh, you opened up to everything 
I would say that way that you know yeah. the moment you opened up to me, you opened up to so many different things. That's yeah. the thing that's cool. That's and cool. also giving myself the allowance and the time instead of you know like yeah. maybe I may not do it exactly, but I am going there. Yes. The, the fact that I'm actually being led instead of uh, thinking, oh, I, I'll do it still my way. I'm not doing that. I'm I'm being led like a salsa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, if you can give me the uh, details of the intensive program, we'll put it in the description below. Yes. I'll, and uh, I'll put in the details of your website and your contact details in case people would like to do the seven day, yeah. do the one year, the all the things that you do. Sure, sure. The two day, if they miss the two day, then. Yeah. 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 I'm giving that, giving that to you. Thank and you. I'm really touched, you know, uh, Frankly speaking, emotionally touched when you say that, you know, things have changed for you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much. Thank you.